so one of the uh, objectives that was established and initiated is surveillance of the pathogen. Uh, Dave Hudson, I think this is one of your earliest maps, Dave. And this would have been in about 2007 or 8, I suppose. Uh, we've got uh, several uh, sessions on pathogen surveillance. The other uh, objective was reliable screening nurseries in Kenya and Debrezite. Uh, the nursery in Debrezite uh, is, is, was initially intended primarily for screening the tetraploid germplasm, durum weed and other tetraploids. Uh, but uh, on an annual basis, some 8,000 to 12,000 lines are screened every year. Uh, the breadweed nursery in Enjoro is, um, is a much larger nursery, uh, typically screening 50,000 lines, populations, and so on each year. This is some of the activities in, uh, in uh, gene discovery. This is a, happens to be an example of a gene from thinopyrin, group, this, uh, group two uh, secondary gene pool. Uh, SR44 is taken from a, a monosomic addition line and engineered so that only the smallest part of the uh, resistant gene remains. And so if you test this, this uh, accession with uh, UG99, it's resistant. But similar lines that do not carry the small translocation are susceptible. And that was a significant investment on, by the project to identify a number of new genetic resources for resistance. And we've hosted a number of workshops, the SARC workshop here, for example, uh, the Kenya Rust Pathology workshops, they've been hosted, I think, every year since 2008. Uh, and this one also, this is also a, an ongoing project, and at the end of this workshop, we can add your photo to the, to the training workshops that have been held. There's been progress in improvement in the frequency of stem rust resistant genes coming from the CIMIT program. In particular, if you look at this line here, this is uh, the frequency of lines that are stem rust resistance from 2009 to 2014. Starting in 2009, there were 42% of the lines in this nursery, stem rust resistance screening nursery, 42% of them were susceptible. And here in the latest year, 2014, none of them fall into that category. Uh, the frequency of lines with adult plant resistance remains rather constant. Uh, and in 2014, 59% of them are what CIMIT calls high to adequate adult plant resistance. And the number of race specific, the number of lines with race specific genes is now in 2014, 41% of those accessions that have single genes that are resistant to UG99. And interestingly, also, uh, there's been this transition toward a frequency of lines that have. Uh, almost a balance, I guess, of adult plant resistance lines and single gene protected lines. Dr. Joshi is on the program later. You'll have more comments, I think, about this. So varieties have been developed and released ahead of the pathogen most, most of the time. Uh, I'm, th I'm sure that many of you in this room are more familiar with the lines that are on this list than I am. But I think one of our initial efforts and intentions was to get uh, UG99 resistant varieties in the hands of some of those countries that have lines that have no UG99 resistance. And the challenge is to continue to make progress on delivering even better lines with better resistance. Uh, but what we have learned is that rust never sleeps. And that these lines here in particular, this line variety Digaloo in Ethiopia, which is carries the SR gene, SR Triumph, and the variety Robin in Kenya, also carrying SR TMP, uh, became quite susceptible uh, in the past. 2013, it was first uh, discovered. Uh, Davis here is going to spend quite a lot of time talking to us about surveillance. And so, what we already knew is that Russ never sleeps, and in fact, uh, 
this is these are some of the uh, photos from the R.C. Robi area in Ethiopia. And this is the cultivar digaloo that was uh, planted in this rather large field. Um, farmer had tried to apply a, a fungicide, but it was much too late. Um, we were pretty, quite sure that the yield from this field was pretty much zero, a complete loss. And this is a look at some of the infection from this new race. Uh, and I believe the uh, North American nomenclature for that race is TKTTF. So <clears throat> we uh, started in 2008. Um, this is uh, an output of what was the Delhi Declaration at the time. And this is a, uh, a, uh, an adoption of, by the extraordinary session of the agricultural ministers in Delhi, New Delhi. And what's important is that recognizing the quantum developments in agricultural science and technology and the contribution of South Asian science, scientists in this sector, we agree to cooperate and collaborate within the region and the required training, human resource development, and, and, and capacity building. And that's a uh, declaration on food security. This is a de declaration specific to UG99 and also from 2008. And again, we agreed to cooperate and collaborate on the required training, human resource development, hereby agree to establish comprehensive partnership among the participants through strengthened dialogue on wheat research, laying greater and greater emphasis on network for implementing mutually beneficial exercise on a regular basis. And so that is a short story for you about the uh, durable rust resistance in wheat project. As I mentioned, it's, um, it's been seven years since we initiated the project. There's been a lot of activity. We're going to be talking about it the rest of this week while we're here, and we hope to establish a connected community that Linda and the team from uh, the, the media team from Cornell will also help keep the community together. So, if you have any questions, I'd be happy to try to answer them. Hearing. You have a question? You know what this is. <laughs> well, so this is why we're here. Okay. Um, think about what, in your view, those of you who are familiar with the project, and, and I'm sure you're familiar with food security in your own country, from what you've seen, what has been accomplished, but also more importantly, what, what has not been accomplished, was left undone, and there's a lot. But if you think about it, then hopefully we can also help decide on what priorities need to be addressed. Uh, and I think we need to make some effort to continue this kind of a, a venue. Uh, we need to continue to try to find additional funding. Uh, and so at the end of this workshop, we hope to have a very robust roundtable discussion. Uh, Dr. Bardwaj will be coming from India. Uh, Dr. Indu Sharma has been trying to get a, a approval to come to this meeting. But I think we have what is really the nucleus of the uh, rust pathology community in South Asia here. And so I think it's time that we... Uh, go through our exercises, learn from one another, but also as we continue through this week, continue to think about those things that we have to increasingly pay attention to, we have to advocate for, and we have to try to find some funds to get uh, all of this work done. So that's all I have for you. We have uh, some tea next, unless there are questions or comments about the praying mantis. I like that. Thank you.